Turn it over to Mr. Cook. Yes.
to the Gulf is a big territory. Um, we don't have in our territory the Santa Fe or the Hitchcock because they have organizations of their own who advocate on behalf of those rivers. So our vision is that we would have a healthy watershed with clean, swimmable, fishable, drinkable water. It's a pretty simple vision to say when you go down to the river, you know that it's going to be safe to eat a fish, safe to swim. Um, when you dig a well down into the aquifer, you know that that water is safe to drink. So our mission is we advocate for conservation and stewardship of the Wicklacoochee, Wicklacoochee, Alapaha, Little and Swanee River watersheds in South Georgia and North Florida through education, awareness, environmental monitoring, and citizen activities. It's the activities part that's particularly fun. We have uh, outings, we have lectures, we have public meetings where we invite elected officials or staff to talk to us about what sort of they're doing to protect the rivers. We go to government meetings and give input on behalf of the rivers. Uh, we have a science team um, that is all volunteers that work on scientific issues. Um, we have geologists and chemists, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, like I said, we were formed in 2012, and our board is all volunteers, and they are dedicated to our rivers. Uh, we have quarterly meetings, uh, board meetings, and our next meeting is Wednesday, July 12th, in Valdosta, Georgia. Um, we met in uh, <coughs> Ada last, and we met in Live Oak in January. So we try to move around the watershed so that, you know, we're sometimes towards north, middle, south. Last year, we spent quite a bit of time um, revisiting our goals. Our number one goal is education. Because when people are educated about the environment, then they'll take better care of it. Um, we're acting as a knowledge resource so that when people have questions about the river or the watershed or water issues, that they know that they can call us. And if we don't know the answer, we'll find it out for them. Um, to do water quality testing, to do documentation, long-term collection of data, and to act as a data repository for, um, you know, if you take a picture of the river today and tomorrow and the next day, to have a place where we're collecting all this data. Um, to identify and address threats to the watershed, as John's going to talk quite a bit about that, um, to engage our community out of doors. Uh, we like to make sure that all of our events are family friendly, and that people feel comfortable bringing their children because when we educate our children about how to take care of the environment, um, we have some hope for the future. And then number seven, lots of places to put this first, but um, we have to have money in order to be able to do that. So we spent time raising money. Um, so back at the back, we have uh, raffle tickets. We're raffling a kayak, a 10-foot pelican kayak. You can buy a raffle ticket. Uh, we have a little mugs like this. Um, we have memberships, uh, we take donations, and uh, we would be happy to have you join us as a member. Uh, many organizations already promote paddling and swimming, fishing, birding, all outdoor related. There's hiking clubs and geocaching clubs and all that. And we do some paddling and water events. Um, but we exist to assist in positive changes and to resist invasive problems. And I'll talk about the problems a little bit. One of the great things about our rivers and about the Swan River Basin is that we don't have one big giant polluter. We don't have um, a rain air plant like the Altamont does that just spews this disgusting brown stuff into the river. Um, we don't have uh, what Black Warrior does over in Alabama where they just have It's single plants just pouring toxins into the water. We don't have that. It's really great. Our problem is that we have little problems all around. Little, little problems all around. Like it's like playing whack a ball. Um, it's not all about preservation uh, and protection. Uh, we're connecting our rich local history. We'll talk a little bit about that. Um, with new paddlers, fishing, swimming, boating. I remember just uh, over at um, Fort McComb Ramp. I was like, oh, you can go swimming. I can be swimming. Um, and what y'all are interested in, the native native plants. When we 
you get up into the upper parts of the watershed, especially on the Lapaha, it is beautiful and, and unspoiled. And the tubaloos are over the river, and you're like in a river canopy, and there's not a lot of invasive species, and it's, it's just beautiful. And more people should have a chance to experience it. So one of our first projects was the Alapaha River Water Trail. And the brochure is there on the, on the board there. I think there's some in the back. Um, what we thought was it would be um, a good project for a bunch of uh, rookies to say, let's go out, paddle all the way down the river a little bit at a time, and um, make a brochure that tells where it's safe to get on and off the river, how long it takes to get from A to B, um, what good river stewardship and behavior is, and we went to um, different tourism authorities and we got money from them to print our uh, fancy schmancy brochure. We got money from Lowndes County, um, the Los of Tourism, and from Hamilton County. And we printed 5,000 brochures. And um, in the 1970s, there was already a brochure, it sort of looked like this, hand drawn. And then ours has a map that's a Google map, which you can have on your phone and you can zoom in and. Um, use the map right online, so different technologies. Hamilton County paid for an additional 5,000, so we have printed 10,000 of those brochures because they're super popular, and they are in visitor stations um, all across Georgia and Florida in the visitor information coming to our state. Love them, they're really great things, so pretty proud of um, In Lowndes County, um, several years ago, the county commission closed the only um, public access to the Alapaha. And our membership um, got active in Naylor, and they got the, that community to sign petitions and lobby the county commission, and we voted to tax ourselves a penny sales tax to build a boat ramp. So the county is building us a boat ramp um, at the Alapaha. So now we're working on a water trail on the Wisconsin and the Little River. So uh, we had a contest for each of those to come up with logos to contest. This is our little river. And again, the map. And again, there was a old 1970s hand-drawn kind of thing. So when you're going down the river, some of the problems that you might see, uh, deadfalls, things, there's erosion, things fall into the river, and then you have to carry your boat over. Clear cutting, occasionally we see people cut right up to the edge. Uh, wetlands destruction um, in Lowndes County, where I live, there's a, oh, I don't know, it seems like every pretty swamp all of a sudden has houses built on it. They build it up, make a little retention pond, and so wetlands destruction problem. Lack of buffers, invasive species, um, impervious surfaces, we don't see enough, we see too much runoff and not enough water going into the ground anymore. Um, erosion, um, Sediments, agrochemical runoff, be it fertilized or um, sprays, forestry runoff, flooding. In 2009, which was, um, you remember there was a flood in 2009? You have some recollection of flood in 2009. Um, a 500 year flood, but it wasn't a 500 year rain. It wasn't even a 100 year rain. It was just a little localized rain event up in the top of the, I would say the into this part. But all that water came zooming down to the river because there's over paving and there's um, bigger cities have to have water retention but smaller cities don't. So they just send all that down to the creeks and rivers and well, lo and behold, everybody, everybody was underwater. And then it was a big hairy mess. Oh, and then, how many years later was it?
So um, that's where we live. We feel like we have a real responsibility there to be an advocate for this watershed. Um, and we can talk about pros and cons. We can talk about creating water trails, boat ramps, um, getting people to invest in solar power, or doing water quality testing. And then we can talk about the bad stuff. We can talk about uh, coal plant, uh, the closing of coal, coal ash ponds, which is happening in Georgia. That where is that going to go? What's happening to that mercury and arsenic? Um, pipelines, agricultural runoff, landfill. What, what goes into your landfill? The landfill in Lons County was privatized in the 90s. There's no way to find out what goes into it anymore. When it was public, you could requisition what are you taking in. Now there's private. We can't know. It sits on an aquifer recharge zone. The Florida aquifer doesn't stop at the state line. It doesn't say, oh, well, I'll just, you Floridians, you get this, and Georgians, you get that. It, it doesn't work that way. So we need to work as a whole big community to take care of our water. And in the aquifer, um, I don't know, a couple of years ago, uh, FDEP did some testing to say, we put some dye in, and it came out, well, not in places they expected. So they put dye in uh, last year when we, in the spring, we went to see at the Alapaha Sink, where the Alapaha goes down into that sink hole, to see where does that water go. And they think, they think it goes this way, but actually it goes other ways, and it comes out in places where they didn't expect. So water can, underneath the ground, go basically anywhere. What are the different? Uh, are you all familiar with the B-maps? 
Oh, well, I'm saying that. Okay. So that's, that's one thing that we do is we try to educate people about things of that nature. And this is actually quite important. The uh, beat maps were required by the Florida legislature. They voted it in uh, 2016. They said, FDEP, Florida Department of Environmental Protection, you have to come up with these beat maps, Fish and Management Action Plan, for how to protect these springs. And FDEP didn't take that very seriously to start with. Their first pass wasn't very good. I believe it was Sierra Club and uh, was it Chitopia Alliance? Beat map doesn't deal with 
event that's kind of specific to predicting the springs and rivers. And, but these other things are things we're concerned about. Just the feedback just doesn't address the trend. Okay, to avoid the whole thing being about VMAP, uh, more VMAP questions? If you want to know all the details, look on walls.net, www.als.net, walls.net, and the little search box, but VMAP, E-M-A-P, -E you'll find where we posted all sorts of stuff about this, yes? If they stopped uh, the tonnage of nitrogen being dumped into the watershed at this point, how long if they stop it? Absolutely stop it today. How long would it take for the river to get itself and the watershed to get itself? That's a very good question, which I do not know the answer to, and I bet they don't either. Now, the framework set up of the legislature was they're supposed to do this in five year increments, having it all fixed in 20 years. So you know, I'm sure if you, if you get the contaminants reduced, yeah, you know, if you can stop it in five years, probably within 20 years, the problem would be done. But how much faster, I don't know. I don't know if anybody knows, but it's certainly a very good question to ask. Now, most of the people in that room on uh, April 13th, their reaction was, I guess it can't be agriculture in these spring sheds anymore. I actually don't think that's the case, because we grow corn. And by we, I mean the two of us and our agricultural collaborator who actually knows how to do it. And we use a third as much fertilizer per acre as everybody around us does. And um, it's not rocket science. It's just farming the way it used to be done. To start with, we use real corn seed, not that stuff that's been modified for pesticide resistance as opposed to taste. And we plant winter cover crops, we plow before planting, we cultivate between the rows. You may not be familiar with that practice. This, so many people have forgotten about it. Georgia Farm Monitor actually did an hour-long TV show on this is a cultivator. This is how you use it. And so and then we actually weed with hose for some of the other stuff. So we don't produce as much per acre in bushels, but we get paid more because it's a better crop. So can you farm with less fertilizer? We claim yes. Can you do it at the scale people like to do it? I don't know, but I guess they're going to find out. And personally, I think the, our new neighbor, who has bought up thousands and thousands of acres in the Swanee River watershed, someone's nodding. Anybody know who the new neighbor is? Yeah, Bill Gates. I personally think that he should lead the way. We are talking to some of his people who prefer to remain nameless. And we'll see if they're willing to do it with that. Why don't they remain nameless? It's a little bit of a thing. I may pick up. They were at that meeting on um, uh, April 13th. They have uh, their corporate policy is very strict about what they can say and when they can say it. I can't tell you why, because I'm not the corporation, but I can just say they have restrictions. So, um, have you heard of, here's another one, the North Florida Regional Water Supply Plan. Or did you have <laughs> One person said that you've heard of it. Right, okay. two people in the room. And this is a big deal as well. We spent five years on this thing with committee meetings. And uh, in January, we all got one week's notice. This is after a whole bunch of groups here from uh, Walls, uh, our Santa Fe River, Florida Springs Coalition, and others had sent in comments. Um, I don't want to speak for the others, but I know the Walls comments, which mostly came from our science committee, were things like, uh, Okay, what's it about? North Florida Regional Water Supply Plan. They dance around the source of the problem, but their maps make it really obvious in Jacksonville. Jacksonville sucking up so much water is affecting everything else. Okay, so supposedly what this plan is for is how to recharge the aquifer. Look, right. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay? Now, you may be thinking, as I was, how about if you just stop completing it? There's not one word in there about limiting withdrawal permits. Not one. That was one of our comments. There's nothing in there about a water budget for, you know, to take this much out. You know? Nope. There is a fancy scheme for taking water out of the upper Swanee River near White Springs and putting it in Falling Creek with a 48 inch pipe running across to do that. To the tune of, I think it's $24 million. And fortunately, that hasn't been funded yet. One of our associates, a geologist, pointed out there's a much easier way to accomplish that to just take the planted timber plantations where it's already running down the rows and put a few wells there, and you know, it's much easier. So we sent in a bunch of comments, hours were that kind of thing, plus you, there's nothing in here about collecting data and don't you accomplished it. Your model is not is not appropriate. It's not appropriate to the cars limestone and like Swiss cheese that our learned aquifer is in. And you didn't do enough peer review and you have no plan for it. So the response of the Swan River Water Management District, the St. John's River Water Management District, was again saw so one week's notice that it was on the agenda to be approved in January, so there. And they did. But we're still pursuing that. We didn't have some leads. This, uh, oh yes, uh, Swanee River Water Management District has restarted something called the Swanee River Partnership, which previously was mostly state agencies. Now they at least claim that they're listening to, they have a meeting with environmental groups and a meeting with agricultural people. And the environmental groups said, can we have a meeting together? I haven't seen that one scheduled yet. So we'll see if they're serious. Um, th that's also a wall stop there. All about that. Just North Florida Regional Water Supply Plan. And this is another example of uh, working with other river keepers, St. John's River Keeper, Lisa Ryan, and of course, Merrily. I keep mentioning Merrily. You all know Merrily. She's the campaign organizer with Sierra Club, sitting bashfully in the back there. She's <laughs> staring for that now. Um, okay, I can't stand here without talking about Valdosta wastewater. Have you heard about that? I don't get I heard that they came to my boat and said it was all fixed. Three or four times. And then, then after that, they said we couldn't touch the water. <laughs> Around what the pipes blew out. 
and it leaked 2.2 million gallons. They claim that was all contained on the site. I don't think that answers the question even if it was. Even if it was. <laughs> We've been dealing with dollars and wastewater for some time. This is immediately held at Bay Hill for our, at our request in March of 2015. And uh, this half the people in the room are from Florida. The other half are, we got their uh, city council member, the mayor, the city manager, the utility director, the um, stormwater director, and uh, the PR person, and um, there was somebody from the county there. So they were trying to say, here's all the stuff we're doing. And they are doing a lot of stuff. But I tried to explain to them, you have a credibility problem. I've got a video of me saying this to them at a city council meeting about a month ago. You have a credibility problem because you said one thing, you did another thing, and then you didn't tell anybody. They don't get it. People, um, are, are you aware that all seven Florida counties downstream have passed resolutions asking for the state of Florida to step in and do something about this? No? Well, they have, plus the city of Fanning Springs. And that was what I was specifically there at the Dallas City Council to tell them about. Their response was, they laughed. not good enough in relations right now. They don't understand what the basic problem is that's as I read from one of the resolutions. Every time there's a spill, the Florida Department of Health is alerted there are warnings that people won't use the rivers. It's kind of a problem, don't you think? They don't get it. They just kept talking about the water that comes out of their treatment plants here that what goes in. Okay, great. It's not a problem. People are complaining about it. One of those manhole cover spills. So anyway, we're keeping after this. Now, you may wonder, what could the state of Florida do? I wondered that too. Because no one else is already under consent order from the Georgia Environmental Protection Division. Uh, one thing the state of Florida could do, preferably in conjunction with the state of Georgia, is fund regular, frequent water quality testing at relatively close intervals along the rivers. So we'll know when and where coming from. It's not all the city of Valdosta. I mean, think about the BMAP problem. Along with the nitrogen, that ain't all that's running off. And um, uh, have you heard about the Pilgrim's Pride issue? Yes. yes. Some of their F1 is issuing straight into the Swanee River. They claim to have cleaned up. Environment Florida, the Bay Sierra Club, are doing a lawsuit. says, uh, nope. So that's another source. And uh, Swanee Dairy is, that's upstream from here, right? I believe that's currently inactive. So I'm told. It's, all, it's also now owned by you know who. Um, and you probably haven't heard about this one. The Withacoochee River is a tributary of the Swanee. And the Withacoochee River has a tributary called Piscola Creek. Okay, and 
have to mention Sable Trail. Have you heard of that? Okay. Yeah. Now, astonishingly, the biggest problem with opposition to Sable Trail is still most people have never heard of it. And when they do, there's a reason that it's given that name. It's a hiking trail. It is not a hiking trail. They have, in the last month, caused another sinkhole at the Santa Fe River drill site in Gilchrist County. That caused, in the last few months, two more sinkholes at the Swanee River drill site in Swanee County. And uh, that caused by the other with the Gucci River in Hampton County. And the big winner is the Flint River in Gordon County, where there's five of them between the road and the river. Now, these are just the ones they admit to in their most recent biweekly report. We know there's others, such as the one that on the south wing of Swanee discovered flying on the Lithuania River between Whitman and Valdosta, where they have actually blown drilling mud up from their pilot hole into the river and caused a sinkhole on the drill site. Now, there, that's the boom that they had put in the river to try to put drilling mud. When I was flying over, I could see what was that yellow thing in the river? It took three weeks to get a straight answer. That's what it was. And what did all the eternity agency do about all these violations? Now, in the case of Georgia EPD, they came out, they made the same trail come down. I was with the, them, the two, him, and the, the one guy in Georgia EPD who had was 34 counties. FDEM is not much better at funding as far as the ability to do anything. So I was down there with the Gucci Ritter that site, with him and the two civil trail guys, and I asked them, so where else did the drilling bug go underground? And they all simultaneously just shook their heads because they don't know, nobody else knows. We'll never know until it comes up in somebody's well or causes a hole or causes something else to. And this problem is not going to stop when they finish construction. Next. Yep. There's another reason she should talk first. Is <laughs> um, Sable Trail um, did this to a farmer's field in Brooks County, Georgia. Turns out this is not just any farmer. He is the U.S. record holder in corn production. He is the world record holder in soybean production. These are fields where he made those road world records on soybeans. They tore through his terraces and despite his warnings, left them broken until rains came in January. And this is what happened. The same trail tries to claim things like, oh, that was a horrible, unusual rain. It was three quarters of an inch. He has had to spend. It's all about money. They did ask him, what would it cost to settle with you? He told them the number, and they referred him to their attorneys. He also has attorneys now, but I probably shouldn't say more about that. <laughs> Next. We do litter cleanups. This may seem more mundane compared to pipelines and multi-state water plants, but it's just as important, we think. Uh, and uh, another thing that's amazing people don't know, we often carry around an eco skate, barrel skate, where you can like pour, you know, put trash on it, it's like streets and stuff, and pour water on it. And the children are astonished to discover that you put it in your yard and run into a river. Uh, next. This is coal ash. Now you may wonder, this, these things are in Georgia. Why are we talking about it here in Granford, Florida? It's upstream from it. And a bunch of this coal ash came from Florida in the first place. Jacksonville has been shipping coal ash to the Miles County landfill for a long time. We discovered recently that Tallahassee before it closed its coal plant ships up to Thomas County. Now, Thomasville is not upstream from you, but Miles County is. Miles County also has PCBs and the wastewater from the Superfund site. And George Power is now proposing to close out its coal ash ponds from the coal plants it's closing and ship that somewhere else. In Georgia, it can go to any mine landfill. It's treated just like household trash, no special permit required. And no notice. It's 
So we're trying to deal with that. Next, please. Uh, when we, that's Tom Potter. He's the chair of our science committee. He had a long career with USDA and fertilizers. And uh, the people on the left are the students who were the winners in our logo contest for the Withcoochee and Hill River Water Trail. And uh, this, do you guys know what this is? Speak up now. Texas 
and on the river there, there are big dams and they would open the gates and let the water out. So the that's what they're, what they're But there's there. not dams on our river. No, at the, at the Okefenokee Swamp. Oh, at the sill. There's coming to be that much water at the sill. And the only other dam on, on the river system is at the base of the Reed Bingham Lake. And so they can let water out there. Um, but that lake is interesting because that lake was built as a flood control, um, for flood control. As water came down from the upstream parts toward Deal and Tifton, it was to be held in the lake. But the lake is very full of silt now. And it doesn't hold, the volume of the lake is less than when they built it. And there's not money because, I don't know how government allocates money anymore, but there's not money to remediate that lake. To, to let the water out, let the river become narrow, and make the lake be deep again. So theoretically, that dam could let water out, but the lake is so shallow that we will check on the flood. But we'll check on the sill. It is a, an interesting point that you know so many rivers in this country are dammed here, down there. Those are the only two, two dams in the entire Swain River Basin. The Alabama River has no dams at all. It's, uh, this guy that rates rivers gives him letter grades by scenery, and the Alabama gets an A plus. It's got no big city, it's got no big industry, it's pretty much wild. And uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, Sawani between Fargo and Raleigh, that's pretty close to like that. Put a pivot at the corner of the center. 
might be somebody we named earlier. There's also Adam Spring, which now just has a fringe of trees around it and it's completely scalped and got so good it's all over the question. That's that's this right here where it doesn't show my this is the spring here, and sadly my picture that was here shows a panorama of the spring and then that field right up to the edge of it, just with the only the smaller than this room around the spring. Question, no question. You get every law that currently is on the local supports to the team, and every law that was proposed to any of the environmental groups was enforced. Would it make any difference if the growth was not No. But some of those laws key. some of those laws may help deal with growth. Well the map. And, and here in, in North Florida, we have a problem with saltwater is infiltrating the aquifer. So wells are being contaminated with saltwater. But we don't live very close to the ocean, really. So that's where the salt water is coming from. So as we draw that aquifer down, it's a problem. FDF actually did a study of that and I don't know if they ever got the final but we got permission to publish the preliminary maps. And they're pretty horrifying. You know, the south part of here, my app is like, what do people drink? Like, it's really, it looks like that, but people drop it. It's like a story I saw um, in here in Naples, the mafia control trash disposal, and they just take it out and throw it out. And one of their war guys asked at one point, well, if we keep doing this, what are we going to drink? The boss says, well, drink bottle of water, you idiot. Never mind the bottle of water around here it comes from Mass and Blue Spring. So, um, now I don't know what every law is the environmentalists have proposed, but I do know the BMAPs, which wasn't even environmentalists who proposed it, could make a difference. And I do know that many of the environmental groups would like to see them at some water withdrawals, and that would affect the growth. So it's, it's interrelated. I'll make a comment. Yes, I was I participating for years with the county, uh, at the county level with uh, metropolitan uh, land use plants and uh, to try and control growth and not have urban sprawl and all that. And at the end, uh, after we had spent several years developing the plan, a big developer came at the very next meeting and said they wanted all the laws away, all the rules away because this was a big growth opportunity and lots of jobs are going to be created and more most for the land development. And I asked the chairperson, why did we do this? Why did we vote this way if we just spent all this time to stop this from happening? And the response was, we don't understand more. If it gets bad enough, they'll pay to fix it. <laughs>